that there are two blessings that people greatly take for granted. It's free time and health. The other one that you guys have heard, it's an authentic hadith talking about taking advantage of five before five. And one of those things is health. Ibn al-Qaim, a great physician and scholar, he emphasizes this point. He talks about health is one of the most precious favors from the Almighty, from the Creator. One of the most precious favors that the Creator has bestowed upon His servants, the most generous of gifts, the most plentiful of His bounties. Rather than even more, health is the most precious of favors without exception. So it's fitting that whoever is granted a portion of it, of this fortune, that he cherishes it. He cherishes it at health, that blessing. He preserves it, health, and he guards it against harm. And chronic disease, brothers and sisters, this is one of the greatest issues affecting our health. Let me share with you some staggering statistics that really push this point home. Do you know that we are the first generation? Kids in this generation are the first of its kind not expected to outlive their parents. Did you understand that? Let that sink in. Did you know that the government is expecting by 2040 that its federal budget, 100% of it will be going towards Medicare and Medicaid. 100% by 24, that's how rapidly chronic disease is spreading. It's a health crisis, an epidemic. The department, get this, the Department of Defense has named chronic disease as an existential threat to this country. Let that sink in. Did you know that over a hundred million, not a hundred thousand, you know your zeros? Hundred million people living in America, us Americans here, I'm born here, most of you born here, Americans, we love our country, right? Of course, people have diabetes or pre-diabetic. Let that sink in. And most people, they don't know that they have or that they're expected to have full-blown diabetes too. And it usually takes to progress about five years. Am I correct? We got two doctors in the house. Is it right? Yeah. 30% of kids have chronic diseases. 30%. One in two Americans has a chronic disease. That's 50% of America. One in two. It's either me or you. Let it not be either of us or any of us, God willing. One in three have multiple chronic diseases. You guys understand my English? Do habla español? 40%. 40% of Americans are obese. Add that with the 30% that are overweight, that's 70%. Obese or overweight. I'm almost done, and then we'll bring on our special guest. One in two of Americans are expected to have cancer. One in two. Very scary, very sad. And this all comes from chronic diseases that are reversible. That by lifestyle choices, by food choices, as our guests now are going to come on and talk about, we can go ahead and be, God willing, not included in this statistic. And we can start to help honor this vehicle that the Creator has given us to get us through life by cherishing it, by preserving it, and guarding it against many of these chronic diseases that are affecting the majority of us living today. So let me bring on our next speaker, Jim Marlowe. He's not only a nutritionist, he's a health researcher, educator, consultant. 
he has been enthusiastically studying nutrition and what he calls the other fundamentals of health for 40 years. He has been teaching people how to eat healthier and how to live healthier on a professional level for 32 years. From 2000 to 2007, he was the chief nutritionist at Dr. Joseph Mercola's Optimal and Wellness Center. When, at its popularity of the Dr. Mercola website, The Optimal Wellness Center was the busiest, this was the busiest nutrition-based health center in the United States. Since 2007, Jim Marlowe has worked in close association with nutritionally knowledgeable holistic dentist Dr. Lena Garcia and the family practice holistic physician Dr. Joseph Grasso. Ladies and gentlemen, we have in the house, Jim Marlowe. Thank you, Eddie, for inviting me to speak here today, and thank you all for coming. Um, my intention is to impart some knowledge and understanding, and um, if I'm blessed, even some wisdom um, that will help to empower you to know how to better take care of yourselves and realize um, what the title of my talk is, which is Nutrition for Better Energy and Brain Power. Now, when you're improving your nutrition, you're not just going to be improving your energy and your brain power. Uh, every aspect of your biology benefits from improved nutrition, but I thought I would give some special focus to better energy and brain power for two very basic and important reasons. In all the years that I've been doing nutrition and health counseling on a professional level, The two most common complaints I hear from people I work with are, I don't have any energy. I'm tired all the time. What can I do for more energy? And the other most common complaint is, what can I do to get rid of brain fog? I, I can't remember as well as I used to, and this is people in their 20s, their 30s, their 40s, you're not just not just older people like myself, I turned 60 earlier this year, but I feel my brain power is as good as it's ever been and actually getting stronger in many ways. But um, most of the people I work with, I'd say at least four out of five people I work with, uh, admit to me that they have some degree of what, they, what I call brain fog. Their ability to think, learn, and remember is not as good as they know it can be. They, their ability to focus, their mental clarity is just not very good. And it's, it's very enjoyable for me to experience that usually the very first benefit that people experience from improving their nutrition is the brain fog begins to lift. And I understand why that's the very first benefit because uh, I've been I've been teaching for years something I learned from um, actually a couple of my mentors many many years ago that whether you're aware of it or not the brain is the most nutrient sensitive organ of the body that is the brain is is the organ that's most sensitive to the quality and quantity of protein and fat and carbohydrates and vitamins and minerals and other nutrients that you're putting into your body. Um, and uh, I once made that statement to a brain surgeon that the brain is the most nutrient sensitive organ of the body. And he said, nah, I don't think so. And I asked him, I, I asked him a follow-up question. And I knew he would know the answer to this. I asked him, what organ of the body is most sensitive to oxygen? And he said, Hmm, you may have a point, <laughs> because there's no doubt our brain cells are the cells that have the most urgent need for oxygen on an ongoing basis. Oxygen, of course, is our most important nutrient, and it's the catalyst for energy production. And every cell in the body needs to produce sufficient amounts of energy in order to function properly. If a cell 
brain cells, muscle cells, immune cells, if any cell in the body is not producing sufficient amounts of energy, it's not going to function very well. If a cell is not producing any energy, it's dead. So energy is really, it's the key to cellular life. It's, 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 it's the factor that affects the quality of, of our life, of our health, most of all, is how well is your body producing energy? And the energy issue is not just a quantity issue. It's important to have enough energy. Of course, that's fundamentally important, but it's, that's not enough to really be healthy in a sustained way. It's, a, it's actually equally important that your cells produce energy efficiently. It's the quality of the energy matters as much as the quantity of the energy. Because if your cells are producing energy inefficiently, like from eating, s consuming stimulants, like refined and processed sugar, which is the most commonly consumed addictive stimulant, or from consuming caffeine, which is the second most commonly consumed addictive stimulant, yes, those consuming those foods, they will, they will stimulate increased energy production, but it's not good quality energy. Uh, the more you stimulate energy production, the less and less efficiently that energy will be produced. And the more metabolic waste you have as a natural byproduct of producing energy inefficiently. A valid analogy would be the difference between a, a, a car that is very fuel efficient and gets like 40 miles to a gallon in a car that's very fuel inefficient, you know, gas guzzling car that only gets five miles to a gallon. What vehicle produce, produces the most environmental pollution? Of course, the gas guzzling car has got more exhaust, more waste coming out of its tailpipe. It's the same thing in biological systems in the human body. When your body is producing energy efficiently, you're generating a lot less metabolic waste that ultimately your body has to get rid of. And it's energy expensive for the body to get rid of it. It's energy expensive to detoxify. And the more energy your body's putting into detoxification, the less energy it has for cellular repair and regeneration and, and healing and, and uh, rebalancing when you get knocked off balance. And we all get knocked off balance because we all have stress in our lives and stress in all the different forms it comes in. That's what knocks us off balance you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, but um, when your body is producing energy efficiently, you're producing less of your own metabolic waste. And your liver and your kidneys especially appreciate that because the liver and the kidneys are the major organs of the body. They have to ultimately take the metabolic waste out of the bloodstream and then we need to excrete it. So the energy issue is, is, of course, fundamental to our biology. And um, I really want to emphasize, it's, uh, once again, it's not enough to have enough energy. It's equally important that that energy be produced efficiently for overall and long-term health and for the prevention of degenerative diseases. So that's just a, a little introduction. And um, now I want to um, get into... Uh, what I really had um, intended as far as the main part of my presentation. So, um, Eddie, uh, I have the clock right in front of me. It's 1.54. How much time do I have? 30 minutes? Okay, so what's that? Okay, so um, I have an intention to cover quite a bit of ground, so um, I'm going to go fairly fast. Um, Eddie told me that he's, you're going to be posting this as a Dean Show episode, right? So you can review this if you're, if you're not taking any notes and you find something that I said to be uh, especially um, valuable or, or interesting, um, you can review it by uh, pulling it up uh, as, as a Dean Show episode. But um, what's that? What, what, what's... <laughs> Oh. Um, okay, so Eddie wants, wants me to uh, tell my story, so I'll, I'll, I'll just tell it briefly. So the reason I started studying nutrition at the age of 20, which is 40 years ago, 1977, was because I reached a time in my life where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired all the time. I was chronically ill for the first 20 years of my life. I had all kind of messy problems that I won't get into, but um, at the age of 20, I was also sick of going to doctors. 
And at the age of 20, I recognized that what the doctors were, were giving me, doing for me, um, prescription drugs, was not only not helping me, I was actually getting worse in the long run. And I wanted to know how to get better. And um, unfortunately, there weren't any real doctors that I knew at that time, not like uh, Dr. Joe Grasso, um, who's a real doctor. But um, I was seeing uh, doctors that were little more than legalized drug pushers. Uh, all they ever did was, you know, here's, you know here's, here's a drug for this symptom, here's a drug for another symptom. I was, I was, I was sick and tired of taking drugs. I was sick and tired of, of going to the doctor. I wanted to know how to be healthy and what I could do to be healthy. And our family doctor had nothing to offer me, nothing to offer me. And I came to understand over time why he had nothing to offer me. Because in medical school, you don't, you don't, you don't learn about health. You study disease. And you study um, uh, drugs that treat the diseases or surgical procedures. But health is not a subject that doctors learn about in medical school. And it's very important to understand that. So be very careful who you trust and what you buy into. And certainly, uh, medical doctors have their place in urgent care, emergency care, immediate care. But um, I decided that um, in order to be healthy, I was going to need to take responsibility for my own health. And the only way I knew how to begin to do that was to educate myself. And I started studying nutrition. And um, the main reason I started studying nutrition is, is uh, he said he wants me to, wanted me to say, I, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired all the time at the age of 20. And so my main motivation for improving my nutrition was to have more physical energy. But actually, before I experienced that, the very first benefit I realized was a lifting of the brain fog that I had. And I didn't even realize at the age of 20 that I actually had brain fog until I started experiencing something different in the way of mental clarity. Until I was 20 years of age, my favorite foods were pizza, ice cream, fried chicken, um, candy, fast food burgers with french fries, um, soft drinks, this, all this kind of fake garbage food I, I was putting into my body. Um, and um, my health was really a reflection of it. My basic teaching about, about food nutrition is if you want to be real healthy, then eat real food. And real food is simple food that does not come with a label with a list of ingredients. Are you saying that's not real food on the table, Jim? No, Eddie, you brought all fake food. You know, it's okay, so it's, that's fine to do show and tell with what fake food is, but where's the real food? Well, I have some real food that I brought with me. <laughs> I'll be showing you at the end of my presentation here. But um, oh, I, I, hope, I hope there's nobody here who has any of these fake food items in your home because you're, it, you're, you're not going to nourish yourself with any of this stuff. This, you're going to burden your biology with any of this stuff. You, have, you're, you're, you, you may have, you may have a, um, a, a momentary... Um, pleasant experience in your mouth, you know, your taste buds might like some of this, this fake food, but um, none of this stuff is going to be um, pleasant for your, your liver, your kidneys, your heart, your lungs, your brain, your nervous system, your immune system. No, the rest of you is going to suffer. You know, it's a huge mistake to eat as if your taste buds are the most important part of your body. And the corporate dominated commercial food industry has kind of programmed all of us to be more attentive to taste and price and convenience. And for many American consumers, the, the, most, important, the most important aspect of the food by far, which is the nutritional value, is an afterthought if it's a thought at all for many people. So, what if our wives are cooking with all this white flour? Well, then you need, you, they, they need. They need to, to, um, to be educated. They need to watch um, uh, Jim Marlowe's um, appearances on The Dean Show. <laughs> and, and Eddie himself, I told Eddie the other day, he's, been, he's becoming quite the nutritional evangelist. I mean, he's making some very, very powerful uh, Dean Show videos having to do with um, helping to wake up people to um, 
freeing themselves of the, the bad habits of consuming fake foods um, of various kinds. You know, and I, I, I think that's the proper way to think of it, is you're not, if, if, you're, if you're currently eating any, any fake food like this, when you, when you subtract this from your life, you're not giving anything up. You're freeing yourself of bad habits. And you're allowing your, your, your biology to realize a higher level of health and you're, you're creating the possibility of realizing a higher level of health, possibly even realizing your full health potential at any time in your life. You know, um, most people in this culture learn to accept a very low level of health as long as they feel okay, as long as they're not acutely ill, as long as they're not in acute pain or discomfort, they're satisfied, okay? You know, the direction of our life force energy is toward healing and health. Our body has a God-given intelligence and capability to know how to be healthy. Our body wants to be healthy. It's always trying to be healthy. If you cut yourself, it heals. You don't even have to think about it. The body has a God-given innate intelligence and capability to be healthy. But this health that I'm talking about is not realized magically. We need to get our nutrition and the rest of our self-care right enough in order to realize the health potential that is within us. So, very important to develop what I call nutritional integrity. Nutritional integrity is all about setting standards for what is acceptable food and drink for your body and then being faithful to those standards. Not strict with yourself, but being faithful. As I was saying to Dr. Josephish, and, and Eddie knows this from um, my teachings, that um, I don't want anybody to follow any of my nutrition recommendations strictly. Strictly is a, is a, is a hard word. It's, it's, got a, it's got like a negative energy to it. When we're doing something strictly, it's because we don't really want to do it, but we feel we have to do it or someone is forcing us to do it and we're forcing it ourselves. And when you're doing something strictly, it's only a matter of time before you stress yourself and you look for an out. You look to stop doing what you're doing strictly. But when you're doing something faithfully, there's a much better energy. When you're doing something faithfully, it's because you want to do it. You believe in the value of it. There's positive energy to doing something faithfully. And your attitude about what you're doing in regard to your self-care and your nutritional practices is very, very important. And you know, my intention has been for many, many years now to honor my body with the best quality food that God uh, makes available to me in the environment in which I live. And the, the rewards um, are incredibly enjoyable. To feel good all the time is, is the exact opposite of what I experienced the first 20 years of my life, where I felt not good all the time. <laughs> So um, just to back up and, and um, get more uh, specifically into uh, nutrition for energy and brain power. So nutrition for better energy and brain power really begins with having appreciation for the most basic way in which we nourish ourselves that is very, very common for people to take for granted. But it's really the most important aspect of our biology and it should never be taken for granted, but it often is. And that's our breath, our breath. Our inhale is our most basic form of nutrition. We inhale air to get our most important nutrient, oxygen. And you can improve the quality of your breath. This is something worth putting time and attention to on a daily basis. To do some type of breathing practice, conscious breathing, some type of breathing practice on a daily basis for just a few minutes maybe to begin with, but to do some type of conscious breathing practice on a daily basis and if you faithfully do this, 
over time, you'll notice that the quality of your breath improves. The, the fullness of your inhale improves. The completeness of your exhale improves. And your overall health will improve. But oxygen is our most important nutrient for catalyzing energy production. Um, if, you, if, you, if anybody doubts that oxygen is, their, is your most important nutrient, hold your breath. See how long you can do that. So doing daily breathing exercise is something I committed to a long time ago. I don't miss a day of daily breathing exercise. And I do a variety of daily, a, a variety of different types of exercises. Um, the, the breathing exercise I'm actually most enthusiastic to do for about the last year and a half is I, call, I, I do what I call um, deep breathing leg raises. And um, my deep breathing leg raises go like this. I'm, I'm laying on my back and I inhale as joyfully and as fully as I can and then as I exhale, I lift up my legs in good form, as, as straight as possible. When I started doing this exercise in August of 2016, this particular breathing exercise, um, I did as many leg raises as I could at that particular um, time, and I was able to do 67. 67 what I call deep breathing leg exercises. And, um, I have persisted with this exercise uh, since August of 2016, and little by little, I've added more repetitions, more deep breaths and, and repetitions, and this morning, I did 319 deep breathing leg raises. So I worked my way up from 67 deep breathing leg raises in August of 2016 to this morning, December 23rd, 2017, I did 319, and my, my plan is to, uh, my intention is to go up to at least 400 and possibly maybe even 500. But it's, as I'm adding more repetitions, it's taken me more time. It took me 20 minutes to do my deep breathing leg exercises. But my advice to you is find something that you're enthusiastic to do and something that, that you feel good with and that you're, um, you, you, you know that this is good for you, something that you look forward to doing related to improving the quality of your breath, deep breathing, or, or just even just conscious breathing. But there's, there's many different type of breathing exercises you can do. There's no end to it, really. But find something that, that, that you like to do that you feel good with when you do it, and then do it faithfully on a daily basis, at least for a few minutes. Um, you know, if you have more time, then do it for longer. But um, nutrition for better energy and brain power begins with improving the quality of your breath. The next way to improve your energy and brain power is with the next most important nutrient for the physical body, which is water. The quality and quantity of water you consume every day is a fundamental influence on your health. Throughout our entire lives, our body is mostly water. And of course, the quality and quantity of water that you consume will affect your energy, your brain power, or lack of it. So it's very important to keep yourself very well hydrated. Another reason to avoid dehydrating beverages like uh, well, I know no one here consumes alcohol, of course, um, but coffee is dehydrating to the body. And also teas, most, most teas, black tea and green tea, I know they're very heavily promoted. I never, I never support that. Those, are, those beverages are dehydrating to the body, and there's other problems with them too. But um, it's very important to, to keep yourself well hydrated with good quality water. Good quality water has got to be it's got to be fluoride-free water. Fluoride is neurotoxic. There's really, really strong science supporting that fluoride hurts the brain, especially of children. There's, there's studies that have come out in recent years that show that there's a very strong correlation between the level of fluoride and the water that children are drinking and then the child's IQ, 
the higher the level of fluoride in the water, the lower the IQ. So fluoride is neurotoxic, and fluoride also inhibits enzymes. Enzymes are the, the catalyst in our biology for energy production in most of our biochemical reactions. So this is really important. This is not just a nice thing to do um, because I'm, I'm mentioning this. This is fundamentally important that you're drinking water that is not contaminated with fluoride. Yes, the fluoride that's that's in the water is added to the water, supposedly to reduce tooth decay, despite the propaganda about that, there is actually very little science supporting that there's any value in drinking uh, fluoridated water for reducing tooth decay, but there's a lot of science supporting that fluoride is neurotoxic, it hurts the thyroid gland. If you're hurting your thyroid gland, the thyroid gland is the master gland of your metabolism. The thyroid gland, which is right here, produces hormones that regulate the rate of your metabolism. Your metabolism is all about how efficiently or inefficiently you're producing energy. So fluoride, fluoride hurts the brain, it will hurt your energy. Um, it, it, it's, it's an obstacle to good health. So be very attentive to the quality of water that you're consuming and consume enough water. There's another thing I want to mention here in regard to the water issue because it's so common. It's like it's so common these days for people to be walking around or to, to have plastic bottled water. Okay. Well, that's better than, be, than allowing yourself to be, become uh, dehydrated or underhydrated. But um, first time use plastic water bottles have plastic molecules in them. Okay? This is especially important for men. If, if you value your testosterone level, and your testosterone level definitely is going to affect your energy and your vitality, plastic molecules are endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals that mess with your hormones, and specifically, plastic molecules are known to be xenoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are foreign synthetic chemicals that actually act like estrogen in your body and work against the activity of testosterone. So I don't, I, I don't think it's just you know, a, a minor thing to, to not drink water out of plastic bottles. I never drink water out of plastic bottles. I have my water in glass. Glass bottled waters are available. It's not, not so convenient. Yes, glass breaks and it's heavier, but I, I will not drink water out of plastic bottles. And I, I suggest that you make that part of your, your nutritional integrity because water is nutrition for our body. Very important nutrition, the second most important nutrient after, after the air we breathe and the oxygen that, uh, that the air contains is our most important nutrient, of course, then water. So phase out drinking water out of plastic bottles and you'll, have a, you'll very likely have a noticeably healthier testosterone level, better energy and better vitality, okay? So the next aspect of nutrition I need to address for better energy and brain power is, of course, food nutrition. Now, getting your food nutrition right does begin with having appreciation for what I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again because it is so fundamentally important. If you want to be real healthy, then eat real food. And real food is simple food that does not come with a label with a list of ingredients. Okay. Real food is meats from healthy animals. Real food is fish from clean waters. Real food is eggs from healthy chickens. Real food can be dairy products from not just cows, but goats and sheep and potentially camels and, 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 and other animals. Real food is vegetables. Real food is fruits. Real food is nuts and seeds. And real food can be legumes, which are beans, lentils, and peas, and grain, grain products. 
So those are the real food groups that are available to us for the nourishing of our bodies. Now, not all of those real food groups are going to have equal value for us. But it's really important to have appreciation for what real food is. If you're buying stuff like this, you're not making healthy choices. In fact, you're making the wrong choices in regard to improving your energy and your brain power. So in regard to real food, there are some fundamentally important quality issues in regard to real food that are often taken for granted by other nutritionists and nutritionally oriented doctors, but I never take, I never take the basics for granted. Because, you know, is, 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 is any of you know who, if you have any, any practice, if you have any art like, you know, Eddie and Joe practice Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu, isn't, isn't it, aren't the fundamentals of your practice always what's most important? You know, the, the fundamentals of chiropractic care, Dr. Josevich and, and Joe, you know, the fundamentals of massage therapy, you know, um, it, whatever you're doing, the fundamentals are, are just never to be taken for granted. If you do, um, that's a mistake. So the fundamentals of real food, other than having appreciation for what real foods are, and you know, real foods are wholesome foods that God provides, um, not adulterated or not manipulated by man in any way. These are all adulterated, manipulated foods. This is, this is, none of this occurs naturally. This is all the result of, uh, of food processing technology. And the, the, the emphasis here is not nutritional value. The emphasis here is convenience and taste and possibly price, in fact, certainly price, and shelf life, but not nutritional value. So you want to become a nutrition first eater. I don't say to completely, you know, uh, disregard attention to convenience and taste and certainly you know, we all have our budgets and we can only buy what we can afford, but really to get your nutrition right, you really need to become what I call a nutrition first eater. And, and when you're planning or shopping or preparing to have the intention to nourish yourself rather than the intention to indulge your taste buds or to eat what's most convenient or to buy what's on sale. If those are your priorities, if your priorities are taste, price, convenience, shelf life, you're only going to ever nourish yourself by accident. And if you're only ever nourishing yourself by accident, your health is going to be in a precarious state. It's only a matter of time before you begin to suffer consequences from not nourishing yourself on purpose, intentionally. So in regard to real food, there's something that I am strongly attentive to both in my personal practice and in everybody that I work with. And that is this simple lesson. The fresher your food, the better. The nutrient value of foods only goes downhill over time. The fresher the food, the better. I personally never eat anything out of my freezer. I don't support eating previously frozen food for building health. There's value there, but when you have something fresh and then you freeze it and then you thaw it out, is it the same? No, it's not the same. You know, freezing is a form of processing that does cause significant nutrient damage to food. You can see this when you have something fresh and then you put it in the freezer and then you thaw it out, it's not the same. It has reduced value. There's still some value there, but it's reduced value. So I strongly emphasize seeking out the best quality fresh food that is available to you. The more fresh food you eat, the better. The best quality food for our health, for energy, for brain power, is food that has a life force energy value to it. Food, can, food has, has physical nutrients for us, proteins, essential fatty acids, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals, um, fiber. Um, there's, there's a lot of physical nutrients, but the best quality food has more than physical nutrients in it. It has a life force energy value to it. 
And the fresher the food, the higher that life force energy value. So don't take for granted the issue of fresh food, okay? Most people do, and they don't think anything of taking food out of their freezer or taking some type of dried food item, you know, you know out of their, out of their, their pantry or you're, you're taking something, uh, eating something out of a can. You know, if that's all that's available to you, okay. But um, if you really want to move toward realizing your full health potential at any time in your life, the more fresh food you eat, the better. The next issue, fundamentally important food quality issue, has to do with whether the food is factory farmed or conventionally grown, and, then, and thus it's going to be contaminated with chemicals to some extent, or whether the food is organic, or even better than that, biodynamic, or permacultured, or wild. It's very important, especially for brain power, to avoid foods that are chemically contaminated with pesticides. Just like fluoride is neurotoxic, pesticides are neurotoxic. They hurt the brain. In fact, most people don't understand how, how, how the, the poisons that are referred to as pesticides, how do they kill bugs? They destroy the insect's nervous system. And um, one of my favorite books that I've read over the years on nutrition was a book written by a very nutritionally minded neurologist by the name of Dr. David Perlmutter, who in 2004 came out with a book called The Better Brain Book. And The Better Brain Book had, had a lot of good nutritional advice in it, but my favorite chapter of The Better Brain Book was chapter eight, titled Getting the Toxins Out. And Dr. Perlmutter, who's a, a very accomplished um, uh, neurologist with um, uh, great appreciation for the importance of nutrition, he identified that the most harmful brain toxins that were, that, that were all um, exposed to, to some extent, are pesticides because they are neurotoxic. So the eating organic issue or eating food that even if it's not certified organic, um, eating food that is not chemically contaminated, this is a fundamentally important issue for your overall and long-term brain health and for your overall health too. Because pesticides also like fluoride, they, they also inhibit enzymes too. They, inhib they can inhibit digestive enzymes and make it more difficult for you to digest your food. And ultimately, you need to digest your food to extract nutritional value from your food. So Chicagoland is actually rich in resources for organic food. Um, there's, there's many stores that carry organic food. Um, I, I especially like a little store um, that's um, on Western Avenue and a uh, Ukrainian village neighborhood, 1025 Northwestern Avenue, called Amish and Healthy Foods. Uh, all of the produce in that store, all of the vegetables and fruits are always organic and they have a lot of other unique food items, but uh, Amish and Healthy Foods, 1025 Northwestern Avenue, which, be, which, which is between Augusta and Division, is um, my favorite store to, to shop at. Um, what I actually like better than, than uh, shopping at stores is shopping at farmer's markets when farmer's markets are available. You know, in the winter now, there's still some indoor farmer's markets going on, like the Green City Market is still going on. Um, but the outdoor farmers markets, of course, have a much greater selection of, of fresh foods in the beginning in the late spring and summer in, into the fall. But um, it's very important to, to seek out high quality real food that is not chemically contaminated with any type of toxic chemicals that can be neurotoxic and hurt your brain. So, The best way to, 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 to provide that is actually to grow your own food to some extent. Um, 
If that's not available to you, or it's only available to you in a very limited way, then I think it's actually um, always worth the time to, to seek out the resources for the best quality real food that is available to you that's reliably not contaminated with toxic chemicals. Uh, farmers markets, markets are great for that. Or if you, if you have uh, neighbors or you have family that, that grows some food, make the most of, 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 of homegrown food that is grown without any type of chemicals at all. Um, but it's, it's fundamentally important to eat food that is not going to uh, insidiously poison you in some way because it, can, it contains chemicals. And the, the thing is with, with pesticides, they're not only on the food, they're in the food. So even if you buy like conventional food and then you think, well, I'll just peel it or I'll wash it off really good and that'll eliminate the, 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 the pesticides. Well, that will reduce them, but you, you can't eliminate what's in the food. Pesticides are not only on the food, they're also in the food, okay? Another, another um, food, fundamental food quality issue um, is the raw versus cooked food issue. Now, there's a lot of reasons why people cook their food, and I certainly support um, to the vast majority of people I work with to cook their food. But cook your food gently. It's always best to cook your food on lower temperatures and more slowly. Doing this, you can serve more of the flavor, more of the moisture in the food. You can serve, most importantly, you can serve most, more of the nutritional value. The food is easier to digest and you don't create toxins in the food. The most common cooking methods, cooking temperatures that people have been misled to use in America actually you're creating toxins in the food as you're cooking it. The most common temperature that people are misled to use for oven cooking, 350 degrees. At 350 degrees, you're creating toxins that are carcinogenic. Dr. Josevich mentioned um, uh, carbohydrates, like, like there's uh, refined and processed carbohydrates can contain acrylamides. Acrylamides are severely heat damaged starch molecules that are carcinogenic. Well, you know what? You bake a potato in the oven at 350 degrees, you're creating acrylamides. Um, it's always best to cook your food at lower temperatures and more slowly. You don't create toxins, you can serve more nutrients, the food always tastes better. My teaching is ideally never cook your food above 225 degrees. 225 degrees is Fahrenheit, 100 degrees, um, about uh, 100, a little bit above 100 degrees Celsius or centigrade, but um, uh, 225 degrees is above the boiling point of water Fahrenheit, which is 212 degrees. You can cook any food at the boiling point of water. You can sterilize any food at the boiling point of water. In the case of 225 degrees, you're a little bit above the boiling point of water. But um, there can be a very significant nutritional difference between the biological value of raw food nutrition and cooked food nutrition. Any food that you're only familiar with in a cooked state, if you've never eaten that same food in a raw state, consider, if, if it's practical, um, consider eating that food in a raw state. Now, there's some foods that are really not, they don't lend themselves to be eating food raw. That's like grains and legumes, unless they're sprouted. You can eat sprouted grains and legumes raw, but just, you know, uncooked grains and legumes, they have no, they have no nutritional value for the body because they, the human, human digestive system cannot digest them. Um, but vegetables, um, the vast majority of the vegetables, um, especially all vegetables that grow above the ground, salad vegetables and the fruiting vegetables like uh, tomatoes and potato, excuse me, t t tomatoes and bell peppers and uh, cucumbers, um, uh, leafy greens, they, all can be eaten in a raw state. Um, but there can be a difference between raw food nutrition and cooked food nutrition. There's one particular animal food that is available to all of us. I was, I'm very enthusiastic for this particular animal food. It's eggs. Eggs, um, I believe, are actually the, the best 
food for nutritional value and life force energy value that is commonly available to us that's, that's relatively inexpensive that um, can really be a health enhancing food especially when you consume it in the way that it's almost certainly going to have the greatest biological value for you. And I'd like to actually demonstrate that right now. I demonstrated this on uh, the last time I was on the Dean Show. Yeah, if you, if you, if you, if you could hold that for me. Great, that would really appreciate that. Okay, so I got, I got a couple raw eggs from organically raised, very healthy chickens. And um, an egg nutritionally, an egg nutritionally is about, is about uh, uh, 60, 62 percent fat calories. All of the fat is in the yolk. Um, an egg yolk is especially valuable nutrition for the brain. The egg yolk has really valuable protein and it's got the full spectrum of lipids that are essential for our biology. It has unsaturated fat, monounsaturated fat, some saturated fat, cholesterol. Cholesterol is absolutely essential for our health. Your body naturally makes cholesterol. And in case any of you don't know, I mentioned testosterone before. Testosterone, the, the, the hormone that has a huge influence on a man's energy, vitality, his strength. Your body makes testosterone from cholesterol. All of this, this medical propaganda that is demonized cholesterol, that's, that's business. That's not medical science. It's business setting people up to be receptive consumers for cholesterol-lowering drugs. Your body naturally makes cholesterol. It's in your bloodstream every moment of your life because cholesterol is essential for life. So be careful who you trust and what you buy into. But an egg is... is is, is, is rich in lipids that I just mentioned. An egg also has a small carbohydrate value, just a, a little bit of, of, of carbs, but an egg has really good quality protein, lots of vitamins and minerals, enzymes, and in a raw state, just think of what this represents. This is a raw egg from a healthy chicken. It represents potential life. Okay. You put this egg underneath the chicken or in an incubator, it'll hatch a chicken. If you cook an egg, will you, can you still hatch a ch ch chicken? Of course not. You, know? you cook an egg, you still get nutritional value. You get calories to burn, but you cook an egg, you kill the life force energy value in that egg. Okay? So anyway, I demonstrated this uh, for Eddie on the Dean Show the last time I was on, and I called this the warrior way of doing raw egg nutrition. So you don't need a glass, you don't need anything, okay? You just need, you need your teeth, and, and so this is, you can see there's a really nice tip to this particular egg, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this egg on my canine tooth, I'm gonna punch a hole in it. Okay, got a nice hole in there. I've, I've taken some of the white, but I'm gonna suck out all the rest of the white by putting it up to my lips. Don't be afraid of real food. Be afraid of McDonald's. Be afraid of Burger King. Be afraid of Coca-Cola. Be afraid of fake food, okay? The, the corporate-dominated commercial food industry has tons of money to program the population, or well, you could also say brainwash, you could also say mind control the population, and they get people to accept fake food as real food, and real food like this, you're told, oh, that's too dangerous to eat. You could, get, you could get sick, you could get E. coli, you could get salmonella. Well, the fact of the matter is there are nourishing traditions all over the world for consuming raw egg nutrition. I've been doing nutrition and health counseling on a professional level for <laughs> Going on, well, I'm in my fourth decade of doing it. I've worked with people all over the world, from all areas of the world, Asia, the Middle East, um, South Pacific, uh, Australia, 
um, as well as all, all basically all countries in North America and South America. I've crossed paths with, with people from all over the world. And uh, I, I'm always interested in learning about any nourishing traditions from other parts of the world. And there are nourishing traditions for consuming raw egg nutrition all over the world. Um, often it's mothers giving their children raw egg nutrition. Sometimes it's just the raw egg yolk and sometimes it's mis mixed with honey or sugar, um, which is not ideal, but you know, this does represent pot potential life. And um, the time in our lives when our body is most sensitive to nutrition is when we're growing and developing, like this guy and those guys over there. And if there's any other, yeah, that, that young man over there leaning against the wall. Nutrition, of course, affects us throughout our entire lives, but it affects us most of all when our body is growing and developing. So in America, there's also, there's also a, an area of American culture where raw egg nutrition has long been appreciated for many cultures, and that's bodybuilding, weightlifting, athletes engaged in intense training culture. You know, it's like there's the, the classic scene from the first Rocky movie. Everybody familiar with the, the Rocky movies? You know, Sylvester Stallone, you know, in the very first Rocky movie, which was probably the very best one, you know, he's, when he, he's beginning his, his training in earnest, you know, he's gonna fight the champ, Apollo Creed, and, and what does he do? There's this scene where he cracks, what is it, six or eight eggs in a glass and he sucks that down, you know? Where did he get that from? Well, Stallone was familiar with bodybuilding culture and boxers and serious training, and so why do they do raw eggs rather than cooked eggs? For the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you. There's a lot of great nutritional value here, but it's even more than that. It's life force energy value. Raw egg nutrition, in my experience, is often the most valuable rejuvenating food for people or the food that helps to support the body when we're putting ourselves under intense physical stress doing serious training. So anyway, I've got, I've got the hole punched in the egg. I think you can all see that. Oh, let me show the camera. See, so, 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 see it's not a hard boiled egg, it's a, <laughs> it's a raw egg, okay? And so I've got the hole there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel the top of the shell, okay? And I'm gonna create myself a little egg cup, okay? And then I have that beautiful, oh, this is a beautiful, isn't that beautiful yolk? Doesn't that look, doesn't that look yummy? <laughs> so I got the, the beautiful yolk in there. It's actually the yolk, the yolk of the egg is actually, that's where the, the life force is, the white, is like the protection for the yolk. And now I'm gonna put that life force energy value and those, 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 healthy, those healthy, non heat damaged lipids, the unsaturated fat, the monounsaturated fat, the saturated fat, the cholesterol, all of those nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, I'm gonna put that into my body right now. That is nutrition for better energy and brain power. So I think I'll stop there.